We're at the Autonomous Car Technology Conference in Detroit, and I'm talking with somebody who probably knows more about this technology than anyone else, Richard it's Wallace fine. for the Center for Automotive Research. Richard, what I'm picking up here is no one seems to agree on when this technology is going to hit the market. Some say, oh, it's just around right. the corner. Right. Others say it's right. going to be decades right. before we see right. this. What's your read? Yeah, that's probably the best estimate I heard, John, will be between now and 100 years. <laughs> it's, it's a little unsatisfying, but um, I, I think the thing we have to keep in mind is once we tell people and buy these vehicles that it's self-driving, it's automated, you can do something else, it has to be 100%. It can't be, oh, John, you know, wake up, <laughs> come back into the fold and take control. You know, maybe on a situational basis when it snows today, I can't drive for you, John, you'll have to do it. But no, no handoff. So that's a high hurdle to be able to do everything that a driver does reliably all the time. So I think partly the discrepancies in people's predictions is how they're defining self-driving or autonomy. If they mean usually, mostly, they may have an earlier date, then it's really got to be, you will never drive the car, and that's going to be further out. Personally, I think it's somewhere in the 2025, 2035 range. You'll see that transition from most of the time to always doesn't need you anymore other than as a passenger. What do you think about the cost of all this? I mean, uh, some people say, oh, it's going to be prohibitively expensive. Others say, look, you're talking about some sensors and some software. It shouldn't be all that expensive. Where do you think this might come down? Yeah, I, I think initially it's going to be a little bit expensive. That's why you tend to see it uh, rolling out first on, on luxury vehicles for the most part. But I do think this is like most things in IT. It's subject to Moore's Law and prices come down, capabilities go up every 18 months. Or, or there so and I also think we may save money elsewhere because think of the uh, other things that you might not need anymore once the computers are driving the vehicles and they never crash anymore and this and that and so I do think you'll see some trade-off some of the things that are in there to support you as a driver might not be needed if you're never gonna drive but you know what would you pay for a car that can never crash I think people will pay a couple thousand Box, yeah. and that's sort of where I expect it to be in a couple thousand dollar range. Yeah, I know Audi's target to the consumer is two thousand five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and then that's actually quite affordable for what it can do. I, I I wonder whether that's going to be more or less than what's going to be needed to meet the twenty twenty five cafe standards, because there are a lot of predictions on what's going to be required for that as well. Raising now the two, of course, unfortunately for the consumer, they're going to get hit with both of them at the same time, and the net effect is probably somewhat less than two times 2,500, but what it is, I, I think, remains to be seen. We see that different automakers have a different level of aggression in introducing yep. this technology. Yep. Audi and Mercedes yep. probably being the most aggressive. Toyota, very conservative. Yep. Is Toyota taking the right path, the safe one, or is it going to get left behind? And conversely, <laughs> are the German luxury guys maybe sticking their neck out a little too far, or are they going to be the leaders and gain share because of that? Yeah, I think it's a, to keep in mind, there are really two pathways here. There's advanced driver assistance systems, which companies are rolling out. To Toyota with them. Toyota's doing a great job in that area, and that's adding additional functionality forward crash avoidance, blind spot, pedestrian, and you know that's each model year they progress a little bit further. But the car that drives itself is not in that pathway. It's not the nth additional component and functionality. It's a whole parallel path that involves robotics and artificial intelligence and sensor fusion and that sort of decision making to replace our own heads. I suspect without telling us so, Toyota's working on that, but they're they're publicly talking more about the short term. The Audis of the world have been a little more aggressive about what they're doing on pathway number two. The Googles and Apples are only working on number two. They will never sell a car that doesn't drive itself, in my humble opinion. And last question here, you're moderating a panel. What do you hope to learn at the conference? <laughs> I hope to learn all the things we just talked about, okay. John. So <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk about, you know, what's the role of connectivity? in that automated vehicle, you know, how does V2V and V2I play into that? What about cybersecurity for these vehicles? Another big issue. Who's gonna authenticate the network protocols and the like when these vehicles join? Software, who's validating that? What do we need done? All of those good issues. Good deal. Richard Wallace, thanks so much for this quick update. Thank you, John. You're really good. 
Keep tuning in. We got a lot more coming from the Autonomous Car Conference in Detroit. Deloitte's Automotive Group is at the forefront, driving transformation and tackling complex challenges. Whether you are interested in globalizing operations, optimizing supply chains, mitigating enterprise risk, or driving innovation, Deloitte can help develop solutions that create long-lasting value. To learn more about Deloitte's Automotive Group, visit us online at deloitte.com backslash US backslash automotive.